Wow. Wow. President Obama, President Putin, <laughs> meeting behind closed doors, two very different visions of the world, two very different visions of <laughs> two very different visions of what we ought to do in Syria. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you read the speeches, uh, two, one sentence from each. President Obama is talking about a managed transition to an inclusive government, which is UN talk for let's get rid of Assad. Right. And then Putin in his speech says, quote, we think it is an enormous mistake to refuse to cooperate with the Syrian government and its armed forces who are valiantly fighting terrorism face to face. The Russians and the Iranians want to double down on Bashar al-Assad. President Obama wants to post Assad Syria. The Russians and the Iranians are going to get a chance to do it their way. So let me ask you, given the present situation of the moment, which of those views would you consider to be more realistic in terms of combating and defeating ISIS? Well, neither one is going to work because, quite honestly, the Russian view, the problem with keeping Assad in place is he's the best recruiter for ISIS and he only controls about a quarter of the territory, but they're going to try that with the Iranians. The American view is great in principle, but it's not going to happen in practice. The Iranians and the Russians won't like it. And, and Putin, I hate to say it, makes a really good point. He basically says, if you get rid of these guys, how do you know you're not going to have a collapse of authority like we had in Libya? And the last thing we want is for ISIS to waltz, waltz into Damascus and establish their caliphate. That would be a historical nightmare. He, so he's basically saying, don't do it. The Chinese are saying, don't do it. And the Iranians are saying, don't do it. I actually think there's a third approach, which is to give up on the national government and to start thinking local. Work with the Kurds, work with these or that tribes. My hunch is that's, that's the only way to do it. But I don't think the world is ready for that yet. And by the way, we'll have Secretary of State John Kerry on this very set uh, in our next hour to talk about all this. Let's get into some of those speeches yesterday. The much anticipated meeting between Presidents Barack Obama and Vladimir Putin at the UN was categorized as very constructive and surprisingly open, at least according to Putin anyway. <laughs> the two offered each other this terse toast over lunch after Putin sat down 20 minutes late. Their first meeting in two years lasted for about 90 minutes, reportedly saw no major breakthroughs. Beforehand in their speeches to the General Assembly, they outlined divergent approaches, as Richard points out, for defeating ISIS and how to handle Syria. Putin criticizing the U.S. for arming rebels and calling for a broad anti-terror coalition. One Obama administration official telling the New York Times, quote, knock yourselves out, talking about Putin's plan. And the two leaders split on whether Bashar Assad could remain in power, President Putin calling him the only way to secure Syria, an option President Obama refused. We're told that such retrenchment is required to beat back disorder, that it's the only way to stamp out terrorism or prevent foreign meddling. In accordance with this logic, we should support tyrants like Bashar al-Assad, who drops barrel bombs to massacre innocent children, because the alternative is surely worse. Nobody cares a bit about human rights, including the right to life. I cannot help asking those who have caused this situation, do you realize now what you've done? But I'm afraid no one is going to answer that. Tens of thousands of militants are fighting under the banners of the so-called Islamic State. Its ranks include former Iraqi servicemen who were thrown out into the street after the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Many recruits also come from Libya, a country whose statehood was destroyed as a result of a gross violation of the UN Security Council Resolution 1973. And now the ranks of radicals are being joined by the members of the so-called modern Syrian opposition supported by the Western countries. First, they are armed and trained, and then they defect to the so-called Islamic State. President Obama also taking the fight to Vladimir Putin in his own backyard, calling Putin out directly for annexing Crimea. We recognize the deep and complex history between Russia and Ukraine. But we cannot stand by when the sovereignty and territorial integrity of a nation is flagrantly violated. If that happens without consequence in Ukraine, it could happen to any nation gathered here today. Now, within Russia, state-controlled media may describe these events as an example of a resurgent Russia. A view shared, by the way, by a number of U.S. Uh, politicians and commentators who have always been deeply skeptical of Russia and seem to be convinced a new Cold War is, in fact, upon us.
And yet, look at the results. Richard, that's a hell of a prelude to lunch. The two guys going after each other like that, and then they sit down. What's it like in that meeting for 90 minutes after they talk about each other that way up on stage? As a rule of thumb, when you show up 20 minutes late for a meeting with the President of the United States, it's a diss. The body language between the two is terrible. terrible. Putin gave a speech yesterday that he's been waiting for a decade to give. Mm. It, he stored up every chestnut from the, Gulf, from the Iraq War in 2000 to Libya, to everything the United States has done and hasn't done, and basically said everything that's going on in the Middle East is your fault. Who are you to preach to me? On the other hand, what Putin did, I don't, I don't know how you say Have you seen that before, though? Can I ask you, have you ever seen a smackdown like this between two superpowers at the UN before? Well, yeah, Khrushchev had a pretty good smackdown when he banged <laughs> but, his shoe on the table. But is the difference, though, I mean, one of these leaders is putting... Uh, armies behind their words and is, I mean on the world stage who has more credibility right now Obama or Putin well, whose Putin. actions match their words well, Obama has a tremendous problem where his credibility took a major hit because of Syria Putin is seen a, he doesn't have the capacity of Obama but he's seen as somebody who's tougher look what he did in Crimea look what he's now doing in in uh, in Syria so what you have is the the, the basic breakdown of this relationship Putin's going to get his way in the short run in Syria because uh, he's going to be willing to do things and we're saying as you heard that some anonymous staff per se, knock yourself out. That's not exactly diplomacy. What we're basically going to do is take a back seat. We're going to let the Russians, the Iranians try to buttress uh, Assad. He'll be in charge of his little chunk of Syria, but he can't establish control over most of the, the territory. This is one of four failed states in the Middle East, along with Libya, along with Iraq, along with Yemen. This part of the world is fast unraveling, and nothing happened yesterday that is going to change that trajectory. But isn't the U.S. in effect saying, we can't solve Syria, you solve it. That's what knock yourself out means to me, and it's making the best of what is a bad situation. No, we're saying we can't solve Syria, you can't solve Syria, go try and fail, and then when you're done failing, let's talk about getting a post-Assad government that enjoys potentially broader support. One way or another, Syria is going to be a mess, not just for months or years, but I think for decades to come, and ISIS is going to be able to operate out of Syria. All right, before we get to Caddy Kay in Washington, though, who has a question for you, Richard, can you explain briefly Russia's end game in Syria, the United States end game in Syria. Russia's end game is to bolster this government and gradually have this government be able to reestablish authority over the territory of Syria and decimate ISIS. Russia doesn't want ISIS to come home to Russia. There's 2,000 Russian yeah. Chechen fighters there. That's Russia's idea, to basically expand governmental control. The United States is to build an, a new successor government that enjoys more support of the people and have that gradually gain control but over in the, the country. But in the short American term, if, if Russia gets what it wants, that's a good outcome yes. compared to the status quo for the United States. <laughs> We may not want him to stay, but stability right now... It's the not stability. What it is is stability. It's that the government stays in control of maybe a fourth of the territory, but it's a major recruiting magnet for ISIS and the civil government war that continues gave birth to ISIS. in three, in three quarters of the country. So it's not stability. It just means you keep a government in Damascus, but the country itself 